What is going on guys? So I did a video here a couple years ago about why the 542 valve is such a great engine. I'll link that right up here. But from that video, I've got a lot of questions on what goes wrong with the 54. It is a great engine, but of course, just like anything, it's gonna have its issues. So we're gonna cover the top three things that go wrong with the 54. Number one is going to be misfires. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that can cause misfires, anything from fuel to ignition to actual mechanical issues, compression issues, a lot of different things. But on the two valve five four, the coil over plug is the number one reason that you're gonna have a misfire on this engine. Now, what I mean by coil over plug is each cylinder has a coil individually. So there's eight coils on this. So what will happen is these coils will go bad, you'll start getting uh, misfires. Now it could be one cylinder misfire, could be random misfire. You're gonna be able to figure that out. Um, the, the first easiest way is if you have a check engine light, go ahead and check that. You'll either have a misfire code of P0304, that would be cylinder four. It could be 305, cylinder five. Now if you have a P 300, that's a random misfire. That one, of course, is a little harder to diagnose. Now, for the scenario that you don't have a check engine light, uh, it makes it a lot tougher, of course, to figure out where that misfire is coming from. But if you've got a good scan tool, you can go into mode six and actually look at each cylinder. And a lot of times you'll be able to see that mode six is picking up a misfire from a certain cylinder and that'll give you somewhere to start. Now, once you do figure out which cylinder that misfire is coming from, we're gonna go to that cylinder, and what we can do is pull our coil off and swap it to another cylinder. So in this case, if the misfire was on cylinder one right here, we pull this coil off and switch it with maybe this one right here with number two. Go drive the vehicle, um, reset the codes, see if a misfire code comes back on cylinder two or go back into that mode six and see if that misfire moved. So once you switch these coils, if that misfire moved over to cylinder two, that tells me that that coil is bad and it needs to be replaced. Now, if the misfire didn't move and it remains on cylinder one, then the coil is not your problem. You may have a, a fuel issue, an injector issue, compression issue, spark plug issue, a lot of different things could happen and we're not really gonna cover in this video. So, to remove this coil, what we're gonna do is I'm simply gonna reach down here, undo the clip, unplug my coil from the wiring harness, and then there's a single bolt, it's an eight millimeter bolt that holds it on here. Now, a lot of times what I find is easiest is I'll just go ahead and unplug the injector as well, and that exposes that bolt where we can get to it. Now we're just gonna get our socket and remove that single bolt. Now, I said it was an eight mil millimeter, it's actually a seven millimeter. Got that bolt out. Now with our bolt removed, we can reach right in here. Pull that coil out. So here we've got the coil out of the truck. You've got the coil itself with its plug, and then you've got the boot, coil unplugged boot. Now this is a separate piece. Um, you have to buy these separate. This actually just has basically like a spring in it that makes the connection from the coil to the spark plug. Now another good thing I see on this one, since this truck doesn't have any misfires, See how all the debris up here, how the boot is dirty, but down here it's pretty clean. It tells me we're making a good seal here. We're not getting you know oil, water, debris down into that spark plug well. Now I have also seen the boot itself get split in it. 
And what will happen is the spark will then jump over and hit the well instead of sparking the spark plug itself. So when you take this out and swap it over to the other cylinder, I recommend you leave the boot in the cylinder that it came out of. That will eliminate whether it's the coil itself or if you have an issue with the boot. The second most common thing that I'm going to cover on this list is related to the cylinders and the spark plugs, but on these engines they're notorious for blowing the spark plug out of the head. So what happens is that spark plug, the threads pull out of the head, which then the spark plug has no way to be held down into that cylinder. Uh, the, the symptoms of this are misfire, of course, but you get a loud popping noise when it initially happens. You get misfire after that, and then uh, you get a loud noise, usually like a ticking exhaust leak type noise coming from the engine. Now what happens when that spark plug shoots out of the head, usually it's going to break the ear off your coil as it gets forced up off of there. Usually the bolt that holds the coil on is okay, but the plastic housing here breaks. Now I've also seen it where it will just shoot up and tear up the boot and your coil ear will actually be okay. Now what we're looking at here is that cylinder one. We can see right down in there and you would be able to look down that spark plug hole and see the spark plug. A lot of times you can just get in there with a magnet and pull that thing out once it's blown. Now the fix for a blown spark plug is actually to put a helicoil in the head, which basically just puts new threads in that head for the spark plug to be held in. Now it's a pretty intense job to do. Uh, Ford actually has a special tool that makes sure you drill and tap and get everything in there in, in perfect alignment. So if you're not really mechanically inclined, this is something you would want to take to a shop or a dealership. Now we're going to go ahead and put our coil back in. Now, if you're putting a new one in, putting a new boot on, it's always a good idea to put some dielectric grease inside the boot on both ends, kind of where it connects to the coil and where it's going to connect to the plug. This will just keep the corrosion down. your coil seated down into the hole and we just need to put our bolt back in. Want to make sure not to over tighten these bolts. They just need to be snug. Once our coil is back in, we just need to plug our components back in. So I'm going to plug my injector back in, plug my coil back in. Now whether you replaced a spark plug, a coil, the coil boot itself, or you had to fix the head because of blown out spark plug, once your repair is done, clear your codes, go drive the thing, make sure that misfire is gone. The third thing on my list of common issues with the 5.4 is going to be lean codes. That's going to be P0171 and 174 codes. Uh, just means that you've probably got an air leak somewhere. I'll show you where it probably is. Now, when you have a lean code, like I said, it's usually a vacuum leak. Now, the PCV is a really common place that it happens on these engines but it could be any of these vacuum hoses. Uh, it could be where the intake uh, attaches, you know, it could be an intake manifold gasket, a lot of different things that could cause it. But one of the best ways to narrow that down is to actually start the vehicle, have it warmed up and running. Then what we can do is we can come in and start spraying carb cleaner. Uh, you could also use a little propane tank, turn it on, and start spraying it around. And the engine will change when basically what happens is that combustible, either propane or carb cleaner that you're using, 
finds where that vacuum leak is and it gets sucked into the engine, that changes the engine. It may rev up a little bit, it may change the way it sounds, and that will kind of get you into the ballpark of where that vacuum leak might be. Now, on these engines, the PCV that comes off both of the valve covers is really common for having an air leak. So we're talking right there in those hoses that come off of it. Now, same thing on the driver's side. We've got that right there in the hose that's coming off. Those are my three most common things on the two valve five four. Now, of course, there's lots of other things that could go wrong. But when I'm talking about the engine itself, those seem to be the most common things that I've run into. If you guys have a different experience on engine related things that happen to the 5.4, drop those down in the comments. Let's uh, hear what everybody's got to say. Now, when we talk about, you know, the truck, there's lots of other things that happen with these trucks. The front end, for instance, is something that's really common. These things last for a long time. So that front end, um, ball joints, tie rods, sway bars, everything just wears out and needs replaced. But that's kind of outside the scope of talking about engine related issues. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.